There are a number of different uses for the lifecycle method component did update, so I thought we might take a look at one that might make sense in the real world. I've stolen a form that I've used in a different React lesson that I've taught and added a little goal here so you know what we're trying to accomplish. Personally, I really hate it when I'm in the middle of filling out a form and then maybe there's a hiccup in the internet or something goes wrong with the form and the page reloads and I lose all of my inputs. Now, this little form isn't that big of a deal, but I've been filling out a form where I've been 15 or 20 different inputs in and suddenly everything gets lost. Fortunately, because we usually set up our React forms to update state every time there's any kind of change to the form, we have ready access to save that state somewhere, like local storage, so that if this form loads and there is a local storage item for the state of this form, then we can just pre-populate the form with the answers that were last filled out. So that's going to be our goal. Whenever the state changes, we will save it in local storage, and then we'll make use of that local storage by setting it up so that whenever the form mounts, it will pre-populate the state if there is saved data in local storage. Now, where the lifecycle method component did mount will run only the first time the component mounts to the page. Component did update will run any time there are changes to either state or props for this component. Anytime there are state changes or props changes to a component, React will automatically update or re-render the component. And then if we have specified a component did update lifecycle method, it will run whatever code we put inside of here. And hopefully you're starting to see a pattern with this did update. It's talking about something happening in the past. The component did just recently update or the component did just recently mount. Like we saw before, if I start putting a pair of console logs, so I can say console log render, and I could put console log mount. We can do the same thing for update. Let's open our console and refresh this app. Okay, we got render first and then mount. And now if I make any kind of change here, we get render again because it had to re-render the form. And then we get update. We don't get mount again because it's not remounting it, but instead we did get the component did update method running. Now, if you have prior experience using local storage, I'd suggest you actually try this as a challenge at this point. I'm not really going to require it just in case anybody is a little bit lost in terms of local storage. But if you really want to challenge yourself, feel free to pause here and try to work through these goals. Otherwise, I will be going over it right now. So whenever the state changes, I want to save it in local storage. I have access to component did update, and that will run anytime the state changes, as we just saw. Let me remove these console logs here. I'll just comment them out for now. And then inside of component did update, I can say local storage dot set item. Maybe let's call the item form data. That's going to be the key of the key value pair, and the value will be all of state. Now, because this is an object, I need to stringify it. So I'm going to say JSON dot stringify this dot state. Now, unless you open your developer tools and go to the application tab and actually look at your local storage, us actually changing anything in our form isn't going to make it appear like anything is happening. So maybe inside of component did mount, let's go ahead and console log local storage dot get item and we will get the form data item. Now this will only happen inside component did mount, so it has to happen when I refresh the page. Oh, and I don't think it likes my console log of the JSON, so I'm going to json.parse that value. And look at that. We've got a console down there that is displaying our first name. We've got the default of is friendly of true. Now, if I change this and then refresh my page, thus triggering a remount, okay, is friendly has changed to false, but of course we haven't set it up so that our initial state is even looking at what has been saved in local storage. Once again, if you'd like to do this as a challenge, you are welcome to. I'll give you a little bit of time now to pause and try that out if you want. There's actually a couple different ways we could get the state initialized with the values from local storage. Inside of component did mount, I could instead of console logging say this.setState and then just set the state to the parsed version or the object version of what got saved into local storage. So if I hit refresh, notice that the are you friendly checkbox has been unchecked. And then if I start typing in some form values and then for whatever reason decide to refresh my page, I get my values pre-populating in my form. 
Now let me test something out. I'm going to uncomment all of these console logs, hit save, and notice that on the first render or on the mount phase, it does a render, then a mount, which is what we normally would expect, but then it does another render and an update. Pause now and see if you can figure out why it's running the did mount and the did update lifecycle methods. Because we are setting the state inside of our component did mount, it's triggering a re-render on React and therefore running component did update. Perhaps a slightly more efficient way would be to take our code here and to, instead of setting state inside of component did mount, actually initializing our state with the value that comes back from getting the item from local storage, or if that is null, setting state equal to the object that we had before. Now if I remove this component did mount line here and refresh, we only get the render and the mount console logs running. In the end, the user probably won't notice a difference, but it's good to know that this might be a slightly more efficient way to write our code. And we can see that if I write more code down here and then hit refresh, everything is working the way we would expect. Now there's one more thing about component did update that we haven't learned yet, and we'll be touching on that in the next lesson. But if you feel like you would like more time practicing this, I'm going to remove the code that we've written and put you right here with the goal at the top so you can try to rewrite the code that we just wrote. Otherwise, if you feel like you're ready to move on, let's do so and learn a little bit more about component did update.